Hey, Michael Dermer here from the Lonely Entrepreneur and, and the Black Entrepreneur Initiative and here with Stephen Carter. And, and Stephen, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, as, as such a successful Black entrepreneur, start a whole bunch of businesses, um, you know, uh, so many Black entrepreneurs you hear don't have access to uh, the networks they need, the mentors they need, the co-founders they need. Um, and you have so much of a unique situation because of, you know, basically co-founding with your brother. But can you tell me a little bit about your journey? Were you looking for a co-founder in general? Was it something that you and you, your brother did together? And what were some of the challenges, you know, being a black entrepreneur and trying to think about how do you evolve your business with a founder? Yeah. So, you know, I think um, going into business with anyone is, is a very, is a huge challenge, right? I yeah. mean, one, it's almost like getting married to someone, right? Yeah, you got to yeah, pick totally. the right partner. Um, you got to weigh, weigh, weigh the pros and cons, the strengths and weaknesses. Um, it, is, it needs to be someone that you can trust. And obviously, you know, going into a business with someone, when you're not making any money, everything is great. Yeah, <laughs> when yeah, you right. start making a little money, things start to change. So uh, establishing frameworks up front is, is essential. Um, you know, as you mentioned, Michael, as you know, I, I went into business with my brother, my twin brother on top mm -hmm. of that. Um, yep. And so even but even with that, to be quite honest, we respect each other enough so that when he brought to me the idea of this, this the vision of this business, and I actually was kind of the financier in the, in the, in the front stages, I still looked at the business just like I would any other business or just like if someone else off the street came to me and said, hey, I have a business idea. I still wanted to go through the business plan. I still wanted to look at the pros and cons, wanted to study the market. I wanted to make sure it was viable and all of that. <clears throat> and, and believe it or not, even with us being family members, um, and I definitely would recommend this, um, we still we still signed a partnership agreement. We yeah. still had an understanding on paper, in writing, of what our relationships were going to, our, um, our, uh, our good partnership agreement would be. Yeah. Um, and then as we started to get into the business, we learned very quickly that we had to um, figure out a way to delineate the roles and responsibilities so that we yep. would not step on each other's toes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people now like to say, stay in your lane, right? So we were, yep. we, we, we yeah, designed yeah. our lanes so that we could stay in our lanes. And, and as we kind of looked at the pros and cons, the beauty of it was that going into healthcare, my mm -hmm. brother uh, is a doctorate in physical therapy, right? So clearly he's a clinician. He understands how to provide top care. He's he's one of the best people that I know in his craft. So easily, uh, from an operational standpoint, he understands. I'm a business guy. I'm like yeah. you. Mike. I've got I've got MBA in finance and um, and in change management. And so I'm all about processes and protocol and project management and profitability yep. and financial statements. So it was easy for us to kind of define our lanes to figure that out. But <clears throat> I still tell you that. It's, I mean, I say it was easy, but it was, no, it wasn't that, that easy. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. It's still communication. Again, well, I like to refer to it like being in a marriage. It's like you've got to communicate. You can't make decisions in a silo. There mm -hmm. are some decision-making um, responsibilities that we allow each other to make without having the input of the other person just to be as effective and productive as possible. But there are definitely decisions that have to be ran by that person. If we don't, then, you know, you get some friction going on. So um, it's just, uh, you know, respecting that other person and, and uh, uh, you know, respecting the relationship and the partnership and communicating on a daily basis. Well, I think, you know, some of that insight around, you know, the complementary skills, you know, respect and a formal relationship, right? Those foundations of being there. And obviously, you've got the dynamic of, you know, brotherhood, which creates a different relationship, right? You have different dialogues. And that's why, like you said, that, that complementary skills and respect and process all have to create those guardrails, right? So you can work together. That's it. And you know what? So for me, I had a unique, I had a unique uh, situation. So I, I worked for a smaller consulting firm for, prior to my brother and I going into business together. Yeah. Um, there were three founders for that firm. And uh, they went through a very, very nasty um, kind of split towards the end of that, that company because they decided that one of the three members uh, wasn't pulling their weight, that they weren't bringing enough value to the, to the company. 
And yeah. because of the structure of the partnership agreement, the two partners that believed that they were bringing in more value than the third partner, they had the voting power to vote that guy out. So they yeah. essentially voted him out of this company that he helped found. They bought him out and he had to start over, start over from scratch. And so it was a lesson learned for me that I was just kind of like in the back of my mind about partnerships and how ugly it can get yep. um, and how choosing the right partner co-founder is so critical. Yeah. Um, was there anything, if it wasn't your brother, and obviously it was unique circumstance, being a black entrepreneur, would you have any different thought process thinking about um, who your co-founder was? Would you say, um, I want to go get somebody who's also, also a black entrepreneur? Would it have just been, do I get the right person with the right capability um, cause obviously there's, like you said, we've talked about before, right? There's a whole bunch of systemic issues that exist and you could make the argument, okay, if I'm on one sense, if I'm going to go ask for capital, would it be good to have a, not to be crass, a white guy next to me, right? Right, 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 right. Or, or is it just for you about, let me get the, you know, obviously it was your brother, so it's different, but how would you give people advice? Would you say, just go get the right person, go get another black entrepreneur and team up, get like, how would you think about co-founders? Yeah, so that's a that's a great great question, Michael. And it, and and I think depending upon the situation and who the person is, it can be a little bit different. You know, I think <clears throat> I think I, I I look at the co-founder partnership situation kind of like I look at hiring employees, right? When I hire on employees with our team, we want best in class. Everyone yep. wants the, the 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 quote unquote best in class, but best in class may not fit within your culture, within the environment or the, the yep. type of uh, atmosphere you'd like to present. So at the end of the day, um, you want the best person that fits with your personality and your skill set. And they need to be able to, to offset the, again, the weakness areas that you have. They need to be strong in those areas so that there's a, there's, there's some, some, some uh, um, equilibrium there. But I would say that at the end of the day, the big thing for me is that do I have someone who is passionate and is going to work as hard or harder than I am? Yep. Because when you're starting starting up a business, the most important thing is work ethic. You know, the most important thing is grinding it out and getting it in. And so I'll, I'll take someone who, who can work hard um, over someone who's really smart any day, just because sometimes it's, you know, smart just doesn't win the battle every time you know if, if, if you can sell the, if you, you've got to be able to sell your story your business not only to yourself and your family but to others and to your employees yep. so you've got to be passionate enough about your vision that you can do that so that kind of passion and work ethic yep. is something that is high up on the totem pole for me in terms of co-founders to, to your question about whether or not they need to be white black whatever um that there's a trust factor that needs to be in place, whether or not that person is, you know, whatever color under the rainbow yeah. or what have you, that's, that's uh, what you need to worry about. I mean, one of the things that, I mean, the things that you don't even think about, right. As you think about co-founders and partnerships. And I think about, I've thought about this with my brother. So if anything ever have to happen with him, his wife, takes over the business. If anything yep. happens with yep. me, my wife takes over the business. So yep. those are other things that you have to think about what happens if, something that goes on with your, your co-founder, your partner, who are yep. you going to be in partnership with? How is that going to look? So there's so many things to take into consideration. And honestly, when you're first starting off, that that's not in your mind. You, yeah, yeah, you right. think about those things yeah. later on, yeah. but, but as a, as a seasoned entrepreneur, I can bring those up to say, those are things you should really think about. They're yeah. Really well, good. it's interesting, right? Because there's these systemic issues. Like when we go to, when we're thinking about raising capital, but you know, what you're saying is that the foundations of trust, complementary skills, good legal agreement, they run across the board, right? Whether you're white, black, green, or purple, right? Um, and if you get those things in place, that's you have a better chance of, uh, chance of success. Awesome, awesome insight. Obviously, you create incredibly successful businesses with your brother, lots of them. Um, and so you've made, really made it work. So it's a great example. And plus your twins, right? Which we have I'm sure we could riff on that for a, a absolutely, long time. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, awesome stuff. Thank you very much.